Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Denise, and today I wanted to do a training just as an invitation for a beginning of a new year on the anatomy of a belief because they're really important and many of them are hidden many of them are conflicting some of the big ones we know we we i think we all know our scarcity beliefs right um but it's just really important to know a little bit about beliefs and um, where they hide and and how they show up and at the beginning of a new year of course um we also want to step into a place of more abundance and prosperity in our lives. And, um, and sometimes that place is right here between our ears um, and then creating that experience for ourselves. It's not ne necessarily an external place, the place of abundance and prosperity. So a little bit about beliefs. They are formed very early in our lives. Um, some people think by the age of three, which is mind blowing. But psychologists say that for money beliefs, they're pretty solidified by the age of 12. You know, they're not wiggly like jello anymore. They have, they're set with keratin in them. And, um, and our beliefs are really, many of them are preverbal. They're from what we've witnessed growing up with our own eyes and ears and our senses and what that witnessing exper experience has created in our bodies. And so um, siblings, the same, you know, siblings from, say, moms and dads often have different belief systems because it's about how we perceive also that experience and those experiences growing up are rarely the same. Um, so if we were in environments where there was scarcity or there was arguing or there was just um, this strictness even around, you know, um, money, we could internalize that and then it becomes our own belief. And then we spend so much of our adult lives um, creating that to be true for ourselves. So let's take, well, let, let me just step back for a minute. So let me talk about the anatomy of a belief here. And then um, what we will do is give some examples. And you can kind of do this exercise for yourself um, at the beginning here of this year. So to create a belief, first of all, is that we have programming from early childhood, right? And the influences, of course, are our parents and our observations of how they related to money or finances or times when there was enough and times when there wasn't, and then what that meant for us. We also, our beliefs form in relation to others as well as our peers when we were younger and, um, and you know, kids compare. We compare like, my friend has that toy and I don't and I want that and can I get that? And what am I told um, about that? So a lot of times, <clears throat> um, many of us come from depression era parents and we're told we can't afford that or um, we have enough toys we don't need anymore or, you know, it's little things, but they um, begin to embed in us like um, we're a computer chip and we're constantly um, recording um, our environment and internalizing it. So our childhood experiences was with our peers, our church or faith in regard to tithing, um, that influences our beliefs around money and also historical events like the dot-com or the Great Depression, where there has been some event in history that has um, kind of, you know, given us a little bit of a head slap around uh, money. So <clears throat> we have early programming, and it's all different, you know, for all of us. And um, I would say that on average, programming is not pure. 
And what I mean by that is that much of our programming is in conflict with other parts of our programming. And, um, and so we do have conflicting beliefs about money. Like there could be a part of us that say there's never enough, but then another part that says, oh, don't worry, um, it always works out. So um, hopefully <clears throat> that's clear. So um, our beliefs create our thoughts. So let's say that I have a scarcity um, Let's say that I have programming that comes from where money is scarce. My belief might be there's never enough for me. And my thought around that um, might be I can't have. The feeling associated with that is deprivation or sadness. Um, the action that might be uh, created, taken with that is that over time, I begin to not ask, I begin to stay silent, I begin to uh, lose touch with my needs. And by by those behaviors, I'm reinforcing the consequences of there's never enough for me. So, you know, we have programming, our programming creates our beliefs, our beliefs create our thoughts, our thoughts create our feelings, our feelings create our actions. Our actions create a consequence, and the consequence reinforces the programming. So let's give an example here of having a money belief of, I am a woman of wealth, and I am, um, I am growing wealth exponentially, and I am embracing my power fully in this realm of money. That may not be my programming. However, I may choose it to be my belief. And if I am believing this, then the thoughts that I am going to have around this belief, because my thoughts are influenced by the belief, is that I I have so much value to bring to this world in the way of creating service and serving um, my gifts up on way big turkey platters to all those who can benefit. And I I am out there letting people know what I can offer so that they can come and sit at the table and that we can share and learn together. And, um, And so this is a thought of wealth, right? And the feeling that I could get from that is excitement and, um, and a feeling that is like so good for my heart that, oh my goodness, this, is, this feels so good to serve in this way and to be in alignment and integrity with who I really am. And the actions that I take around that are, are actions of connection, actions of connections with those I serve and actions of connection with my money, with managing it, with knowing what's going on in all of my accounts, with being a good steward, with holding money as a blessing in my life, as a resource, as are so many other forms of abundance, and especially this form of money. And the consequence of that is that I reinforce the programming that I am a woman of wealth, that I am creating abundance in my daily life, in my yearly life, and I am doing it through the art of connection and through the art of serving and through the art of staying aware and consciousness in relationship around money. And whenever we are coming from a positive belief, a belief of abundance, that belief always has an element to it where we are connecting with others, where we are connecting with um, an energy bigger than ourselves, where we are connecting with our money. And beliefs that are limit, the limiting beliefs or beliefs that are rooted in scarcity they always have avoidance behaviors with them of, I don't want to look, I don't want to see, it's too painful, it's too scary, Um, something out there can hurt me. If I look, I might not have. And so 
I invite you to look at what belief, beliefs system that you've come from and to and if it's a belief of scarcity one of the things that you can be doing is just looking and listing at the money behaviors that you do in relation to this belief and begin to do the opposite but it's really really helpful to just put this stuff take pen to paper and write this stuff out because there's so much juicy stuff that comes from the knowing of um, our belief system and what's going on with us and um, many years after I s started doing um, money coaching, and I will tell you, it took like a while to get my business off the ground. And um, this is a story I want to share with you because it is just so powerful that um, I like still remember it like it was yesterday. So I was going to do a talk um, over in Marin on money beliefs. And I was struggling in my practice. I was, I did not have the amount of um, clients that I wanted. I was not bringing in the money that I really needed. And I couldn't figure out why, like what, and, and when it comes to beliefs, it is important to figure out the why, at least for me. Um, and I've always been that type of person, even as a nurse, it was always important to know the why of why I was doing what I was doing. And so um, that's been an underlying thing for me to go deep to the root. So I was going over the Golden Gate Bridge and um, I was driving and by myself. And so I started talking to myself. I actually started talking to spirit and I said, why can't my business take off? And why? And I just started crying. And why is it that, you know, um, it's so hard for me with marketing and why is it blah, blah, blah. And um, I got about three quarters away from over the bridge and I just felt this um, knowing that came down. That's all I can describe it. Maybe a download. I don't know. And what I got was the reason that it's so hard for you is that you have grown up your whole life with a programming of don't tell others what you do. Don't brag. They could see it for themselves. There's no need for you to be out there shouting from the rooftops. I'm a money coach and I can help you with, um, you know, with your psyche and with your spreadsheet and I can help you marry the two and help you to come to this new space in your life. Um, it was, it was more about me being silent and then um, having people mind read or kind of know like, you know, what I was doing, like how crazy is that? But anyway, you know, that's what it was. And when I got that information, I was like, Oh, belief uncovered. Now I need to do the opposite. And I did. I took action on speaking circuits and all kinds of things to get out there. And I was so uncomfortable, like really uncomfortable, but I made myself do it. I was like, you go girl, you can do this. You need to overcome your fear. And, you know, and that really helped. And then little by little, I got more comfortable. And so that was the way that I moved through a limiting belief, a belief that really influenced my bottom line. So I hope this is helpful to you um, today. I hope that you take this anatomy of a belief and journal on it and write it out for yourself. And if you have any questions, you know, I am here for you. Email me, um, text me, message me. I'm here to help you move through whatever belief it is that you want to move through this year and also what belief that you want to embrace. And maybe there's one and maybe there's more. So Happy 2019, every blessing and so much love to you.